Hello and welcome to this quick little video on univariate procedures in SAS. These would be tests and confidence intervals. These in are going to include the t-test, the median test, the Wilcoxon test. Those three are for the population mean or median. It's going to also include the proportions test and the binomial test. Those will be for the population proportion. And the variance test, which will be for, obviously, the population variance. So let's start SAS. And since we have to analyze data, the first thing we have to do is import the data. So let's go ahead and import the stat grades data file. file name is as usual data step again we're going to call our data set stat data we're going to infile the data file that we defined above it's comma delimited so delimiter is a comma first obs equals two because that first row is since the data set is in canonical form that first row is going to be the variable names then the input line which has the names of the variables that we're inputting and these are names of the variables as we want them to be. ID, grade, gender, remember the dollar sign tells us that the preceding variable, in this case gender, is a categorical variable. SAT math, age, college, and again college is going to be categorical. In this data step let's also define the variable term and we're going to find it to be fall 2014 because that's when that data uh, when the data were collected and while we're at it we'll go ahead and create a title for this and uh, do a proc print and run all this just to make sure that we've inputted the data correctly and remember when you're running it you can either do F3 on your keyboard or click on this little running person on this little running person we ran it. The results are listed over here in the results window. They're also presided, provided down here in the results viewer. Here's the data. Everything looks like it checked out fine. Term is our new variable, fall 2014. Notice it does not change at all for this data set. That's fine. Since we're doing one population procedures, we really should get to know our data. Uh, one of the best ways to get to know our data, especially if we're focusing on the mean or the median of the data, is to create a box plot. If we recall from um, activity 1b, to create a box plot in SAS, it's proc box plot. Specify the data. Then in the second line, the statement is plot. GPA is your dependent variable star or asterisk term. Remember here term is just fall of 2014. That doesn't change. So this should give us a single box plot. Since we specified box style equals schematic, we're going to get the whiskers going to the inner upper fence and the inner lower fence and circles will be the outliers. Let's run this. And there's our box plot. We have three low outliers there's the inner lower fence, the inner upper fence. That diamond again is the mean according to SAS. This bar is the median, third quartile, first quartile. Looks like it may be slightly skewed negative. We could of course determine that using the um, Hildebrand rule if we wanted to. So first it's going to be a one sample t test. It's a new procedure. We're going to hypothesize that the mean GPA is equal to 3. And so the setup for this test is proc t test. Specify the data. And then for that null hypothesis, which is h0, we're going to say it's equal to 3.0. So this line right here, this part of the line, 
specifies the null hypothesis. And th the next line tells us what variable we want to test. In this case, it'll be GPA variable. And we run these three lines, and we get a lot of output. That seems to be SAS's modus operandi, is to give a lot of output. Three tables and two graphics. So let's look at the first table. And this is sample size, mean, this will be the sample mean, standard deviation, sample standard deviation, Sa uh, standard error, this is going to be the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, the minimum and maximum GPAs in the sample. Simple sample statistics. Second, it's going to be similar. We're given the mean. We've also got a 95% confidence interval for the mean. We're 95% confident that the mean of the population is between 2.9775 and 3.1731. We're given the standard deviation. And we've got a 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation. We're 95% confident that the population standard deviation is between 0.4329 and 0.5728. That was table two. Table three gives the results of the t-test. Degrees of freedom is df. This is equal to n minus 1. In this case, n is 100. 100 minus 1 is that 99. t-value is the test statistic value for this data. PR greater than absolute value of T, this will be the two-tailed test, the p-value for that. Because p is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, if the t-test is appropriate for this data, then concluding that the average GPA for all students in this population, being 3, is reasonable. We do not have sufficient evidence to say that it is unreasonable. Now note that the t-test requires normality of the measurements. That is, it assumes that the GPAs came from a normal distribution. This first graphic helps to illustrate or to graphically test that. The histogram is from the data. The blue curve is of the normal distribution, and the pinkish, reddish, brownish, whatever color that is, ish curve is what's being observed. So we're trying to compare the normal curve with the kernel curve. If they perfectly overlap, then it's guaranteed that this data came from a normal distribution. They will never perfectly overlap. but. Is it close enough? And that's really what we're after here is, is it close enough? And I don't know. Just by looking at this, I'd say, no, it really looks to be heavily skewed to the left. So I don't think it's close enough. I'm not positive, though. If this graphic doesn't do it for you, here's a second graphic. This is the quantile quantile plot of GPA. If the data came from a normal distribution, then those dots should line up along that diagonal line. These dots along this diagonal line. They won't ever perfectly be along the diagonal line, but they should be close enough. Looking at this, and it looks like there's a definite pattern here. Starts low, goes high, ends low. This is a, this is uh, this indicates that the data are also uh, left skewed. So both of these indicate the data are, is, are left skewed. Now the question is, is, are the data significantly left skewed? And as we talked about in class, one way that we can test that is using the um, Shapiro bulk test. Now to do that, we have to run our proc univariate. And we actually did do the Shapiro bulk test, but it was back in activity 1A. It's proc univariate, data equals stat data, and then we add in normal. Var GPA because we're testing normality for the GPA variable. So let's go ahead and run these lines.
Here's the moments. That should look familiar to us. Basic statistical measures should look familiar to us. Test for location. Remember last in, in 1A I told you let's go ahead and skip over that. Test for normality is the new stuff. Shapiro-Wilk test. Test statistic is W. Its value is 0.938798. The p-value is 0 0.0002. Because the p-value is less than alpha, in this case it's a lot less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. For the Shapiro-Wilk test, the null hypothesis is that the data came from a normally distributed population. We reject that. We conclude the data did not come from a normally distributed population. That means that the t-test is not appropriate. Since the t-test is not appropriate, we may want to use the Wilcoxon test, which is also called the signed rank test. Same null hypothesis we're testing that the mean is equal to 3 for the GPA. To do the Wilcoxon test, or the signed rank test, use PROC univariate, specify the data, add in two additional items on this line, LOC count and our null hypothesis. Here it's MU0 equals 3. For the t-test, it was HO equals 3. Here it's MU0 equals 3. Then on the next line, specify the variable that you're interested in. Running that, again, since it is a univariate procedure, we're going to get a lot of information. The moments, basic statistical measures, test for location of mu0 equals 3. This is the table we want. Remember, we're doing the Wilcoxon test. SAS calls it the signed rank test. Signed rank test is the bottom of the three. Its value for the test statistic is 657.5. The p-value is 0 0.0209. Because p is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, the null hypothesis was that mu is equal to 3. So if the Wilcoxon test is appropriate, we can reject the null hypothesis. Note that this conclusion is different than the one we had with the t-test. But we concluded the t-test was not an appropriate test because the data were not normally distributed. Here we've got the Wilcoxon test. We reject the null hypothesis, but we really do need to test if the uh, data come, uh, meet the requirements of the Wilcoxon test, or meet the assumption of the Wilcoxon test, which is um, uh, sim uh, symmetry. The data must come from a sim symmetric distribution. Now how can we do that? Well, we choose the Hildebrand rule. Hildebrand rule is the mean minus the median, and the absolute value of that, divided by the standard deviation. If that is less than 0.2, then the data are sufficiently symmetric. If it's greater than 0.2, the data are not sufficiently symmetric. In doing this calculation, we find out that that ratio is 0.22248362. to Since that is greater than 0.2, the data are not sufficiently symmetric. The Wilcoxon test is not appropriate. If the Wilcoxon test is not appropriate, we're done. We cannot test the mean of, of or learn about the mean of this of the population that gave us this data. That is, unless we actually know the distribution that gave us the data. We don't. But we can start doing some tests on the median. And so the one that we're going to use is the median test what SAS calls the sign test. It's also a part of PROC univariate. In fact, let's have the Wilcoxon test up here and the code for the median test down here. Compare the two. They should be exactly the same. Why should they be exactly the same? Because the code that gave us the results for the Wilcoxon test, or the signed rank test, also gave us the results for the sign test, the median test.
So let's run those. Signed rank test was the Wilcoxon test. The sign test is the median test. The test statistic for the median test in this case is 12.5. The p-value is 0 0.0154. Because the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis, conclude that the median is not 3. And that's it. We have gone through all that. Notice the process we followed. We started with the t-test. We looked at the assumption of the t-test, which was that the data came from a normally distributed population. We tested that assumption. Had the data passed the assumption, we'd report the results of the t-test. In this case, the data did not pass that assumption, so we moved on to the next more general test, which was the Wilcoxon test, or the signed rank test. We looked at the assumption of the Wilcoxon test, which was that the data came from a symmetric distribution. We tested that using the Hildebrand rule. We rejected that assumption. Therefore, the Wilcoxon test, or the signed rank test, was not appropriate. So we moved on to the next more general test, and this one actually was for the median, uh, also called the sign test. No assumptions involved in this. And from the results of the median test, or the sign test, we reject the null hypothesis that the median is indeed 3. And that's the median of the population is not 3. So those were the tests of center. Now let's look at tests of proportions. Proportions tests. Let's, ex let's examine the gender variable and start out with a typical graphic. This will be a horizontal bar plot of gender. We're not going to include the stats on it. There we go. Female goes out that far, male goes out that far. And for all of these, let's have our null hypothesis be that the proportion of females at Oklahoma State University is 40%. So the first test for proportions is going to be called the binomial test. No, I'm sorry. It's going to be called the proportions test. Code for that, it's PROC FREAK. Not really surprising because we're dealing with categorical variable. PROC FREAK deals a lot with the categorical variables. Specifying the data set again. The next line is going to be tables, gender, slash, binomial p equals 0 0.40 and this will make it this will actually give us the proportions test results run that we're given sample statistics for the um, gender variable in this sample there's 45 females 55 males that's the first table second table gives us the results of the test of the proportions test. We'll use the, um, for the, I'm sorry, this gives us the confidence intervals, so we'll go with the confidence intervals first. We'll use the proportion ASC, ASC stands for asymptotic standard error, and the 95 lower and 95 upper, so we're 95% confident that the true proportion of females at OSU Stillwater is between 0.3525 and 0.5475. The third table gives the results of our hypothesis test. We hypothesized that P was equal to 0.4. Two-sided test gives a p-value of 0.3074. Because this is greater than alpha, we conclude that it's reasonable to conclude that the proportion of females at OSU Stillwater is 40%. Pretty straightforward. You get the computer to do the calculations, you interpret the results. The one sample proportions test is actually an approximate test. Um, the exact test is called the binomial test. 
the difference between the binomial test and the proportions test in SAS is simply the inclusion of a second line or an additional line exact binomial. If not for this line the two pieces of code will look exactly the same. The output is going to be very similar as well. This table is common between the two. This table is common between the two. And most of this table is common between the two. The only difference is when you do the exact binomial test, you also get the p-values for the exact test. These four numbers were from the proportions test. These two are from the binomial test. These, two, uh, these four numbers are for the confidence interval for the proportions test. These are for the confidence interval for the exact binomial test. So we're 95% confident that the true proportion of females at OSU Stillwater is between 0 0.3503 and 0 0.5527. That's all there is to it. Those are the only two one-sample proportions tests available. The main difference between the two is that the binomial test assumes the data come from a binomial distribution. That may or may not be true. That's completely up to you and the definition of that binomial distribution. The third set of tests that we're going to look at is going to be the variance test. For various reasons, and I'll let you read that in the handout, there is no built-in variance test in SAS. You have to create your own. So that's what we do here. This is SAS programming. This is actually a very simple part of SAS programming. I do not expect you to be able to program SAS just to use it. And in all reality, a one sample variance test is rarely going to be done. So it consists of three blocks of code. The first block of code calculates the sample variance and the sample size. Sample variance we're going to call SVAR, sample size we're going to call N. This line, the output line, actually saves that information from the PROC univariate. No print means we're not going to print anything out. So we're just going to use it to save the sample variance and the sample size. The second block uses the sample variance and sample size and your hypothesized variance to calculate the p-value and the confidence interval. These formulas come from the textbook, by the way. This is all done within a data step. And at the end of this data step, we're going to have a data set called var test results. And then we print out var test results the data set that we just created. When we print it out, we're going to get values for the sample variance, the sample size, hypothesized value of the variance, the test statistic, the p-value, the lower confidence level, and the upper confidence level. Highlight, run, and this is what it prints out. Sample size is 100. Sample variance was 0.24312. The hypothesized variance was 0.33. Test statistic calculated was 72.9360. Corresponds to a p value of 0 0.045825. And a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval, ranging from 0.18742 to 0.32809. So we're 95% confident that the true population variance is between these two numbers. We hypothesized it was 0.33. That's just outside the interval. That gives us a p-value of 0 0.045, which is less than our usual alpha of 0 0.05. We reject the null hypothesis. We conclude that, according to the data, it's unlikely that the population has a variance of 0.33. Had we thought or believed or hypothesized that the population variance was 0.25,
we could test that by going down here to the var 0 line, change that to 0.25, and rerun the whole set. So for the second, for the test that the population variance is 0.25, p-value is 0.88, so we failed to reject that null hypothesis. In fact, every value between 0.18742 and 0.32809 is reasonable as a population variance. And that's the end of this code. This covers all of the one sample tests that you would want to run. And so while we're at it, let's just go ahead and feed in a quit. And we're done. Hope this was helpful. Take care of yourself. See you in class.